everyone. My name is Jess the Stitch and Witch and today I have a book review for you from The Cauldron Born exploring the magic of Welsh legend and lore by Christopher Hughes. If that sounds something like you'd be interested in then make sure that you stay tuned. But before we get into today's book review I just have a couple things I want to say. Of course first of all is if you are new here and you love everything to do with witchcraft, druidry, magic, uh, knitting and fiber art, tarot, all of that good stuff, then please be sure to hit that subscribe button. It does really help out my channel to grow and to attract more people. And if you do enjoy today's video, please make sure that you give it a thumbs up as well. Again, with all of these smaller channels here on YouTube, if you enjoy this type of content and you want to make sure that you see more of it all the time, do yourself a favor, subscribe, thumbs up. It tells the YouTube algorithm and gods that this channel and this content is enjoyed and liked, and they're much more likely to recommend it to other viewers. The other thing I want to let you know about is that, of course, I am a professional tarot and oracle card reader. Apparently, I can't talk today. Professional. <laughs> tarot and oracle card reader. So if you would like to get a personal reading from me, you can click below in the description box. There is a link to my shop. I also make pagan prayer beads and I have a few workbooks and downloadable types of things that you can purchase as well. So now that we've gotten all of the housekeeping out of the way, let's talk about the book. So from the Cauldron Born is actually the second book by Hughes that I have read. I have read his book on Celtic magic and I quite enjoyed it. That book was all about diving in deep to the concepts of the Awan and this book dives exclusively into the Welsh legend uh, and lore of Ceredwyn, Telesian, uh, Gwion Bach and all of the characters centered in the story about how she tries to give her cursed son the gifts of poetry and bardic powers so that he will be valued by people in society. Specifically, she wants her son to be valued by people who are in the highest circles of lords and um, kings and, and in courts and things like that. And it's the story of how Gwion Bach, uh, the local boy that Caridwyn hired to stir the cauldron and keep the fire burning for uh, a year and a day as she gathered all of the herbs and ingredients that were necessary to bring this cauldron, or so this brew into being, accidentally obtains the powers himself. And this book is goes very in-depth into the actual tale, pulling from different translations and different tellings of it with different characters and people of note in the story. And then you spend quite a bit of time going into each figure in the story and what they potentially represent and mean, not just for the story itself, but also for uh, the culture at the time, and then how we can apply those types of archetypes and figures and energies to our own life here in the everyday. This book is, um, let's see, how many pages are you for the actual book itself? Uh, we end at 219 pages. Can get a little bit dry at times, but not to the point where it is um, completely difficult to read. You may find yourself wanting to put it down in between sections of chapters and things like that. Uh, you definitely will probably find yourself reaching for your journal or your book of mirrors in order to sort of take some notes and do some reflections. There are a lot of great opportunities in this book to do so. But I think probably the coolest part of this whole book is the final section that takes place after page 219, and that is the optional ritual and practice that will last a year 
long, like a year and a day. So this is the Carriage Wind's Cauldron year-long ritual. There is a meditation that you start off with at the beginning. And then month by month, there are different ingredients that you are supposed to gather. And there is a monthly work of contemplation and study. There are, um, uh, there are some sections of this where you are required to reread sections of the book to familiarize yourself. And then there are uh, practical ingredients that you are supposed to gather. And this book breaks it down into each individual ingredient and what they are necessary for. Then the book goes on to describe the actual ritual that takes place once you have spent a year gathering the ingredients. And it does recommend that you preferably gather your own ingredients, that this be a process that takes a month where you plan little um, excursions out into the community or where you maybe have to drive or travel a little farther in order to procure the ingredients. For instance, one of the ingredients for January is snow water. And if it doesn't snow where you live, the book does suggest that perhaps taking a, an opportunity to travel in the month of January, or if you happen to live in the Southern Hemisphere, that might take you into a different month. You might have to flip some of the months around to harvest certain ingredients that are available at the right time of the year for you personally where you live. It does suggest that you maybe take a drive, take a little excursion on a weekend, and go to a place where you can harvest that ingredient. I was lucky the Fraser Valley was actually hit by quite a bit of snow the week that I was reading the part for January and I was able to harvest myself some snow water. The only thing that I am missing right now is a small sprig of from a yew tree, but I did reach out to some local people on Facebook and found somebody who has uh, yew hedges in their yard and so I will be able this weekend to go and grab myself a sprig of that. Uh, this book was great because it definitely got me encouraged to get out of my house, get, put on my winter boots, put on my coat and my gloves and go out into the environment to take a look around me, to connect with nature, to identify different trees that are around me again, to harvest what I needed to. And because we had just had a big freezing rainstorm, there were actually a ton of branches that had broken off the trees and were on the ground. And so everything that I needed to get was actually already on the ground waiting for me. I didn't have to cut anything. Mother Nature did the trimming for me. There is a discussion on um, how to, uh, like what to do when you encounter certain experiences with the land. A book of Ferelt, which is, I know I've pronounced that absolutely abysmally and I apologize. Um, does it actually say how to pronounce Ferelt in the back? Ferilft, Ferilft. Uh, the unknown case of magicians that Caridwin consulted, also synonymous with the magician Virgil. Ferild. Okay, well, that's my best pronunciation of that. So there is a talk about the book of Ferild, and then also there is an afterword about how to sort of um, not let go of your connection with these various figures and deities. And of course, there's a great bibliography in the back because Christopher Hughes is nothing if not thorough in his research. And then a great index, which makes searching through the book afterwards really easy and um, worth your time. Christopher Hughes is one of those authors who I continue to look forward to reading books from him. Um, I do have another one of his books in my possession, which I uh, intend to read this year. And he's one of those authors who really takes his time to research things, to consult not just modern and contemporary witchcraft resources and works, but also a lot of historical and uh, academic resources as well that really broaden and deepen his understanding of the subject matter. 
Of course, if you're not familiar with this already, Caridwen and her tail comes from the country of Wales, the, the region of Wales in the UK. And actually, one of my New Year's resolutions this year has been to learn some Welsh. And I found that reading this book alongside doing my uh, initial foray into learning Welsh was actually really helpful. This book helped me to sort of understand a little bit. He does go into some uh, places within the book where he breaks down the different meanings of different words and what they can potentially mean and reflect on in modern times and where sort of the language meets the magic. And I really found that helpful for my personal understanding of a few prefixes, suffixes, and meanings within my own Welsh practice. He does also go into the topic of mutation within the language, which I think is really helpful if you if that's something that you're not aware of when you jump right into uh, Welsh language learning. There are mutations of a lot of words when you're learning, so sometimes a change of a letter, sometimes leading off a letter, sometimes adding a letter to slightly change the way that something is pronounced or rolls off the tongue. And with a language like Welsh, which is not exactly easy to grasp the sounds of if you are just used to speaking English, uh, this little discussion about language mutations within the uh, names and why we can maybe adapt them to a couple of different words, why meanings and uh, why the uh, translations might change in the meaning a little bit. Also, how some people may have misinterpreted meanings in the past. That was really helpful to me as someone who is attempting to learn some Welsh this year myself. Um, but I am 24 days straight in a row of learning, 20, 24, 23, something along that lines. Um, I'm getting close to my 30 day uh, learning streak on my Duolingo app and I'm really enjoying it. It's been, it's been really great. I really also appreciated that this book had a pronunciation guide within the glossary in the back. If you are somebody who struggles with learning different terms from different languages, or even just struggles to pick up language or terminology in general, the pronunciation guide within the glossary in the back is fantastic. And again, if you're somebody who likes to refer to specific topics within a book later on down the road, there is a very comprehensive index in the back of this book, which I, pardon me, always, always appreciate. I love a good index in my nonfiction books because I am the sort of person who will suddenly have a thought or an idea for a ritual or a video or I'm doing research within my own collection of works for a topic later on down the road. And the first thing I'm going to do if I remember that something was contained in a book is I'm going to look to see if that book has an index. And if it does, it makes my search so much faster. And if it doesn't, I am thumbing through that book or scanning through it page by page by page on a Kindle version, and it's annoying. It's very annoying. So an index is incredibly helpful, and I absolutely love it when books contain them, especially within uh, witchcraft and, you know, new age druidry books. It gives them that extra note of credibility that you don't always find within this particular genre. So thank you. Thank you to the publishers who put an index in this book. Cons. Um, one thing I will say is I think the subtitle is slightly misleading, Exploring the Magic of Welsh Legend and Lore. I expected when I picked this book up, when I read about it, that it would be about more than just Caridwin, that there would be other Welsh legends and lores discussed in this book. And there are not. If for that, you're going to need to pick yourself up a copy of the Mabinogany and possibly a Welsh English dictionary to sort of go through some of the individual words and just remind yourself throughout the Mabinogany what it's all about. 
I did pick up myself a copy of that. I do intend to start perusing it later this year, but uh, for now I'm moving on to a couple of other books that I would like to get read before I dive back into Welsh uh, mythology. Sometimes I find that it takes a bit for me to sort of absorb and process a lot of the information that I have read in certain books, and this one was no exception. There are little parts of this book that I would like to reread here and there throughout the year, as I do do the uh, Caridwin's Cauldron ritual. I have collected my January, or most of my January ingredients, as I said already, and I'd like to try to keep this going and see if I can keep this momentum and this dedication to this process going for the whole year. I think it will be a really good complement to one of my other resolutions, which was to do more green witchcraft and just to get out into nature more. I think it blends really nicely with my year long intent. And so I wanna see if I can keep it going. Oh, I got that one annoying little piece of bang that just always wants to fall in my face. Um, so yeah, cons, I think it was slightly misleading that it sounded like we were going to be diving into more than just one particular legend. I think a better subtitle would be exploring the magic of uh, Caridwin and her mythology or exploring the magic of the lore uh, or exploring the lore of Caridwin and Taliesin or something along those lines. I think that would have been a better and more accurate subtitle. So I did find that when I started to read into the book and I realized it was only going to be focusing on just that one myth, I was like, oh, okay. I thought we were going to be doing something more broadly Welsh, not just Caridwin Welsh. So there was that. Um, do I have any other cons about this book? I don't think so. There are exercises at the end of every chapter, which gives you uh, great things to do and to sort of, um, th there's a lot of questions and uh, prompts to reflect on and to, you know, really deepen your understanding of the tale and of the influence in our own world, if that is something that does have a lot of influence on you. I think that it's one of those books where it's it's definitely very specialized. So if you're not interested in Caridwin and her mythology at all, you probably wouldn't get a ton out of this book. But I do think that there are things that you could get from this book. Certainly it is a very thorough exploration of this myth, of the characters that we find within it, of the lessons that they have to teach us, not just about the time and the place that this legend came out of, but also the modern implications that it has within our magic and our practice. I do think that this is going to interest mostly specifically uh, pagans who work with deity, who love Celtic magic and uh, druidry, uh, who are, or who are maybe into like uh, possibly some Norse legend and lore as well. There are some interconnections, of course, with those particular places and the gods and all that kind of stuff. They're definitely very interconnected locations. So I do feel like this is a really great book and I do absolutely recommend it. I gave it five stars in my Goodreads um, review at the, when I finished it because I loved it. But I also recognize that this is not a book that's going to interest everyone. If you are somebody who doesn't do much work at all with deity, if you are, or if you're more interested in deities and pantheons that are far away from the Celtic pantheon, this is not something that will appeal to you in the slightest. So I do think it's a really great book and I do recommend it, but I recommend it for my fellow niche witches and druids because yeah, I don't think everyone's going to love it quite as much as I did. Um, so yeah, 
recommend, absolutely love. This is definitely going back on my shelf. This will be referenced. I am going to, I'm actually not even gonna be putting it back on my shelf right now. It's going to be kept out in my room or near my altar of some kind so that I can go back and reference the different ingredients and the reflections that I'm supposed to be doing each month as I work on the Caridwin's Cauldron um, uh, ritual and, and brew, so. Yeah, thank you guys so much for being here with me today. If you have read this book and you have some of your own thoughts that you would like to leave about it down below in the comments, please do, of course, remember to share your comments and your criticisms respectfully. If you have any questions about the book specifically, about maybe something that's contained with it or my opinion on a specific area of the book, again, leave those questions down below in the comments and I will do my best to answer them for you. If you have any suggestions of specific books that you would like me to review and uh, on the channel here, please leave them in the comments. I cannot promise that I will get to them all, but if they are ones I have had on my own reading list or if they are ones that have piqued my interest, you may see them in a future book review here on the channel. And of course, thank you so much to my members who make the purchase of extra books possible by giving not monetary subscriptions to my channel every month. You guys make all of these extra videos possible by keeping me up with the funds to keep up with all of these things. The next stretch goal that we are working to with memberships is to get me enough money to fund a new camera. This camcorder I've now had for a few years now and it's definitely starting to fall under the not quite good enough for modern video standards. So we are working towards getting me a new camera and a new mic to uh, up the quality of the videos. If you would like to see me reach those goals faster, then please hit that join button down below on membership. You do get extra benefits every month for being a member, including extra videos, monthly readings, a yearly reading for the start of 2022. You get to vote on which decks I use in those reading videos. Sometimes I do fun extra things too, like story time with Stellar. You sometimes get to hear um, special uh, guided meditations. Sometimes I do behind the scenes videos and other things like that. And if you are someone who is just here mainly for the fiber art content, then there is a specific tier just for you. And I give you sneak peeks on projects I've finished here for the knitting only content and all that kind of stuff. So thank you again so much for being here with me today, guys. Take care of yourselves during these crazy unprecedented times still Thanks, 2022. Um, and until we speak again, be wise, be brave, and be magical. Bye.